Hello students, this is Ashwini from Chinta.com. In this month, we are starting with the pre-selection process of our research program for summer of 2025. In this video, I will share with you some strategies about how to get started with research at school level. I'll give you some examples so that you can start thinking about it. And I will also share with you some of the possible directions in which new research projects at school level can come up. So let's start with the first part. How do you get started with research at school level? There are a few things that we do when we mentor students for our Path to Ivy League programs. The first thing that we do is to suggest some beautiful papers on mathematical sciences. These papers are not academic papers per se. These are not hardcore journal papers. These are a bit of popular science styled papers, but they contain research related problems and insights. One great source of this is the Quant, it's a magazine that has been published, uh, sponsored, I think, by the Simons Foundation. Uh, I will share the link in the description. Quant has many articles like these. I call them semi-formal papers. What are semi-formal papers? You do not need a lot of background to study those papers, but yet they are on recent academic and research activity. Please check that out to get started in this journey. The second step, and this is also done in the mentoring program for our Path to Ivy League, is to get introduced to formal papers. Now, there are several journals out there which publish papers that can be understood by high school students. One great example is the Mathematical Gazette that is published by the University of Cambridge. You can check the link in the description for that. Mathematical Gazette has a lot of papers, real papers, which are expository in nature as well as innovative in nature. What we usually say is try to read through a paper and then try to think of a weird sub problem of that paper. So that's the second thing you do. You start with form semi formal and then you go to formal papers. And then, of course, you can go and participate in some research project. Chinta has some wonderful research projects with us. You can check the link in the description for some of the past projects that students have done here. I think you will enjoy them quite a bit. Now let's come to the directions of research in which you can work on and start thinking about. One thing we do really passionately at Chinta is pure mathematics. Group theory is an integral part of our research aspirations. Group theory is a wonderful part of mathematics. It's, a, it's, it's on symmetries of objects, to speak very informally. One example, and here is a question that you can think about. One example is about the wallpaper groups. Wallpaper groups are certain types of symmetries in which two dimensional patterns can be laid out. I'm of course giving you a very informal definition. Turns out mathematically, there are only 17 wallpaper groups. One of the mathematicians, Edith Muller, found that in Alhambra, there are 12 of those 17 wallpaper tilings already available. So the sculptors, even without knowing anything about group theory, did a very rich and thoughtful tiling of the floors. 
12 of the 17 are already there in that particular monument. Here is a question that you can think about. What about the Indian temples? If you go to the Indian temples and if you look at the sculptures there, what type of those 17 wallpaper tilings can be found in the Indian temples? This can tell you a lot about the progress of innovation in India in that period of time. Especially if you're working in the Gupta age or some Mauryan age or even a little bit later in the Palas and Senas or even in the Sultanate period. This could be a period-wise study. This brings together group theory, archaeology and um, a bit of history, I might say, architecture, a lot of things come together. This is an example of an interdisciplinary research project, of course, which involves pure mathematics as well as applications. Another thing that we are really passionate about is geometry. Hyperbolic geometry is a great part of everything that we do. Of course, we learn it from scratch. We do not expect the students to know group theory or know hyperbolic geometry. It's part of the training. Hyperbolic geometry is pure geometry, of course, but it has beautiful applications in different applied sciences as well. One example is the uh, idea of hyperbolic deep reinforcement learning. Uh, I think around seven to eight years ago, Michael Bronstein and his colleagues came up with the framework of this. So basically, they are using geometric features of the data to look at machine learning or deep learning algorithms, deep reinforcement learning algorithms. You can check the link in the description for some detail on that. So if you know a know very good geometry, uh, you can also think about it and you can go in the direction of machine learning. You can go in the direction of deep learning, deep reinforcement learning and stuff like that. So this is the prevailing philosophy. In high school, you start with something pure mathematics and then you sort of go towards something more applied in nature. If you have signed up for the summer research program, then make sure to attend the orientation sessions that are starting from 13th, uh, I think 15th of February, I'm sorry, 15th of February. But if, if you miss the first few orientation sessions, that's fine, you can join the later ones. We will do the pre-selection orientations for at least two and a half months before the actual program begins in May. Um, because there is always a lot of applicants and we can take only a few. So there is a selection process. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you love doing research. You will fall in love with new questions. And until then, until the next time, take care. Goodbye. I'll see you.